Hey there, it's YG and you're watching YGXAI. When we get to AGI and post-AGI, that's where we are. That's where we're going to get to. So guys, will we be alive to see AGI? Will AGI happen in our lifetime? What is AGI actually? So we will be looking at all of these questions. So stay tuned till the end of this video and make sure you like this video. So let's get started. So before we start, let me ask you something. What is AGI? What is Artificial General Intelligence according to you? Here is what Andrew NJ, the CEO of Cohere AI and Deep Learning AI has to say. Um, regarding AGI, the standard definition of AGI is AI that could do any intellectual tasks that a mm -hmm. human can. So when we have AGI, AI should be able to learn to drive a car, or learn yeah. to fly a plane, or learn to write a PhD thesis in university. For that definition of AGI, I think we're many decades away, maybe mm -hmm. even longer. I hope we'll get there in a lifetime, but I'm not sure. Yeah. One of the reasons that there's hype about AGI in just a few years is mm. there's some companies that are using very non-standard definitions of AGI yep. and if you redefine AGI to be a lower bar then of course we could get there in one or two years uh -huh. but using the standard definition of AGI of mm -hmm. AI to could do any intellectual task a human can mm -hmm. I think we're still many decades away but I think it'd be great if we manage to get there. So you heard him himself he said that AGI should be able to do any intellectual task that a human can do for example learn to drive a car, fly a plane, or write a PhD thesis. So this is what Andrew NJ thinks and he thinks that we are many decades or maybe a lifetime away before we reach AGI. Now here's what Sam Altman has to say, the CEO of OpenAI, you all know him. Does the global economy feel any different to you now or materially different to you now than it did before we launched GPT-4? I, I think you would say no. No, no. It might be just a really nice tool for a lot of people to use, will help you with a lot of stuff, but doesn't feel different. And you're saying that... I mean, again, people define AGI all sorts of different ways, so maybe you have a different definition than I do. But for me, I think that should be part of it. So now, according to Sam Altman, AGI is something that can bring a change in the world, change in the global economy. And we could point out that, yeah, this was the point where we actually saw a shift and impact on the world. So that is what Sam Altman thinks. So if we talk about the general consensus, which definition of AGI is, you know, widely accepted. So definition is artificial general intelligence, AGI is defined as a type of artificial intelligence that possesses the ability to understand, learn and apply knowledge across a wide range of tasks similar to human cognitive abilities. So it should understand, it should learn and also apply knowledge across a wide range of tasks. So what this means is that, you know, if it's if it has learned coding in one language, one programming language, then it is able to, you know, use that understanding in other different languages. Similarly, what humans do, if they know one coding language, I mean, uh, I'm sure they have to learn the new rules and all of that in the other programming language, but there is some things that they can carry on, which they have learned from other programming language. So if an AI is able to do all these cognitive things, then we can say that AI is artificial general intelligence AGI. So what Andrew NJ said is that we are many decades away before we see a model able to do PhD thesis or learn to drive a car or fly a plane and all of it. Is that true? So we'll tackle this one by one. So first let's get to the topic of will we have a model that can write PhD thesis. I want to bring your attention to Sakana AI. So Sakana AI is a startup that has developed AI scientist which is you know a group of LLMs which work together come up with novel ideas and also peer review their ideas to check if it's actually an innovative idea or not so here you can see these are the results that they have got so their internal peer reviewing agents have come up with these papers which according to them is novel so the folks at AI scientists what they did is they checked it according to the newer IPS guidelines which is a conference which checks for AI and ML related papers and peer reviews them. If the paper has a score of around 6, then they consider that this is a novel paper and it is something innovative and new. So all these papers you can see, some of them had 3, some of them have 4, but some of them had 5 as well. So none of the papers qualified and they didn't cross the new or IPS guidelines. But what you have to see is how close they are. They have scored 5 and just one point then 
the paper will be actually considered a novel research but we have to take into consideration that we are able to get such output from models that are not innovative in nature at all even the state of the art models today are innovative are by no means innovative so imagine what will happen when we'll have the next iteration of models or maybe 3 or 4 years from now see in some of their tweets what they are saying is that we really believe this is the gpt1 of ai science in another tweet they are saying we are at the will smith eating spaghetti moment for ai science this is the worst the ai scientists will ever be so they have also pasted the photo i think it doesn't look like this it looks more like this now and it will never be the same and it will continue improving so now moving on learning to drive a car or fly a plane so some people think may think that embodiment may be necessary for this yeah this can be done without embodiment as well but some people think that for agi we need embodiment so first of all what i want to say is agi is artificial general intelligence it is more about the cognitive intelligence and not about embodiment this is what elia satskar had to say when he was asked if embodiment or having a body is necessary to reach to agi let me ask sort of a embodied question staying on agi for a sec now, do you think uh, agi system would need to have a body we need to have some of those human elements of self-awareness consciousness sort of fear of mortality sort of self-preservation in the physical space which comes with having a body i think having a body will be useful i don't think it's necessary but i think it's very useful to have a body for sure because you can learn a whole new you you can learn things which cannot be learned without a body but at the same time i think that you can if you don't have a body you could compensate for it and still succeed you think so yes well there is evidence for this for example there are many people who were born deaf and blind and they were able to compensate for the lack of modalities i'm thinking about Hel- helen keller specifically the main idea behind is learning from past experiences you know having self play and self improving so if we talk about that is it so far have we seen any experiments or projects that exhibit learning from the environment self improvement things like that let me show you this so this is the hide and seek game from open ai which they have mentioned in a blog post that was published on september 17 2019 so what is that is they have they trained two deep neural nets one is a hider and one is a seeker and it is similar to a hide and seek game so you can see this is the kind of setting they were put into they were given some of the objects and the hiders had to hide the seekers had to seek and they were given only one single reward function that is the hiders have to hide from the seekers and the seekers have to find the hiders with that they were given some basic tools that is ramps and you know walls boxes and very basic information that you can push a box you can climb a ramp all of that so when this neural net was trained for millions and billions of generations see what happened see for the first 0 to 22 million iterations the seekers are learning to chase the hiders so here you can see they are chasing the hiders so to tackle that from 22 to 88 million generations the seekers find a way and they try to hide themselves using these walls so that the seekers are not able to find them so this was completely emergent behavior to you know hide themselves using these walls and all of that now to tackle the hiders what the seekers did it at the end of 115 million iterations the seekers learned to use ramps so that they can climb the ramps and get into the place where the hiders are hiding all of this was emergent behavior they just only knew that they can climb the ramps but how will they use they have to use it to climb the ramps and go to the places where they are hiding all of this was emergent so again now to tackle the seekers and hide effectively what the hiders did is that at the end of 388 million they locked the ramps and then made their shelter so in this way they couldn't use the ramp and so the hiders couldn't be defeated so at this point even we might start to think that how come the seekers will you know get to the hiders because they have closed the ramps they have locked the ramps and also they have hid themselves how will they climb the wall so at the end of 458 million iterations what they did is they used this box put in front of the ramps the locked ramps and climbed that and then entered the shelter so finally leaving no option for the seekers what the hider did is that at the end of 481 million iterations they locked up everything not even leaving a single thing they locked up everything and then there was no option for the seekers 
Now see all of this was emergent behavior. They had only one reward function that the hiders have to hide and the seekers have to seek. And they were just given basic tools, not knowing how to actually use them to defeat their opponent anything. But this all of this was based on their learning. So this was one example. Let me show you one more. I hope you remember the great AlphaGo and its move number 37. Some people who are watching artificial intelligence from a long time will surely know what is AlphaGo and what impact it had in the field of artificial intelligence. For others, let me just tell you in brief, AlphaGo is a game where you have to build areas and you know, one who has the more area in, in that kind of territory, he is the winner. And this looks very simple, but it's a very, very hard game and the various combination in this game exceed the number of atoms in the universe. So you can't just, you know, completely look for all the possibilities and then code. That cannot happen. So AlphaGo played with 9 Dan player and the highest ranked player in the world, Lee Sudol. And they had a battle between them and that was absolutely amazing. Go watch the look at that documentary. But today we'll be actually focusing on move number 37, which many claimed as an innovative move and a novel approach and everybody was shocked. So let's refresh our memories and have a look at that. So Archap sees AlphaGo plays the move 37 and Archap puts a stone in the board. Oh. 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 When I see this move, for me, it's just a big shock. What? Normally, human, we never play this one because it's bad. It's just bad. We don't know why. It's bad. The professional commentators almost unanimously said that not a single human player would have chosen move 37. So I actually had to poke around in AlphaGo to see what AlphaGo thought. And AlphaGo actually agreed with that assessment. AlphaGo said there was a 1 in 10,000 probability that move 37 would have been played by a human player. So it knew that this was an extremely unlikely move. It went beyond its human guide and it came up with something new and, and creative and different. I want to see Lee Sedal when he sees this move. He's back, Lee is back. AlphaGo는 PC는 뭐 확률적 계산을 하고 그냥 이기기 위한 그런 머신에 불과하다고 생각을 했었는데 그 수를 보는 순간 아니구나 충분히 AlphaGo도 창의적이다. 어 정말 아름답고 음 바둑의 그런 아름다움을 잘 표현한 수고 굉장히 창의적인 수였다. Normally you have to think about one two minute no more, but this time. I think more than 12 minutes, the more I see this move, I feel something changed. Maybe for human we think it's bad, but for AlphaGo, why not? This move is very special because with this move, all the stone play before is work together, it's connect, it looks like a network, link everywhere. It's very special, very special. <laughs> 측면이 된다는 게 그것이 포인트가 아니었나 싶은데 바둑에 있어서 창의성이라는 건 도대체 무엇인가 이런 또 의문 하여튼 굉장히 의미 있는 수가 아니었나 So you watched yourself the reaction everybody had when they saw move 37 and the probability was 1 in 10,000 and everyone said that it was an original move a novel move that the AlphaGo has learned itself so we already have projects and research that have shown creativity and it's just that you know we see that in max and games like these when you, where you can clearly quantize what is right what is wrong and give a very good reward function but when it comes to language it, it is kind of difficult to you know exactly say what is right and what is wrong so there is some work to be done there but i think it is quite achievable and seeing the recent uh, leaks when it comes to strawberry and q star the research happening over there it feels so promising if you have i have covered ilya satkavar's blog on open ai where he shared some information i think which is about q star which is improving mathematical reasoning with process supervision also in recent study it is said that strawberry when given time to think 
came up with new ideas and new solutions which was not present in its training data if you want to learn more about that and the upcoming model from openai you can watch this video where i have covered all of that so after seeing all of this what can we understand from all of this what is the conclusion will we have agi in our lifetime and i think the answer is absolutely yes in the next two decades i guess we will surely have agi maybe end of the two decades something closer to that but we will have an ai model that is agi or very close to agi but the question arises what will we see in this decade in the next 10 years what is going to happen so let me end this video with with this clip but what i would say in the interest of not trying to dodge a question is i expect that by the end of this decade and possibly somewhat sooner than that we will have quite capable systems that we look at and say wow that's really remarkable okay guys i hope you liked this video it took some time to you know connect all these bits and pieces so if you like the effort do like this video and subscribe to the channel for more such ai related updates news and discussion topics like these i hope you have a great time ahead and see you guys in the next one